everyone, it's me, oh my god, everybody's favorite unofficial auntie. I am a drag queen and a qualified early childhood educator with years of experience teaching in preschools and reading with children and adults alike. And during this fabulous winter season, I'm teaming up with Literacy Quebec to help people discover some fabulous literature all about winter time. So, I have a, a special story here. This is actually a story that I read when I was very young. My kindergarten teacher read this story to me and has always been one of my favorites. So this is a folk tale. Now a folk tale means that it is a very, very, very old story that people used to tell each other when parents would tell stories to their children or when neighbors would tell stories to their children or they would pass it on by telling it verbally. That means just with their mouths. They didn't have a book. They just told the stories. That's a folk tale. And this one is very, very old from the Ukraine. And this version is illustrated and written by Jan Brett. So Jan wrote down the words and drew all of these beautiful pictures. And this, I think, I, I think it's a very funny story. So this is a story called The Mitten. Now, if you look here on the cover, now I don't really see much of a mitten. I see all kinds of winter animals in their big warm fur coats and oh, there it is. There's the mitten, the tiny little mitten. Well, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens in this story. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the book jacket. Now, the book jacket, you might be wondering, what is that? A jacket, is it because the book is cold? No. <laughs> A book jacket, I open this up and you can see, look, I can take off this cover of the book. Now this cover is there to protect the book so that that way there's nothing that spills on it. There's nothing that scratches the book because we want to protect our books. Our books are precious. Books are so important. They make a beautiful gift. And when someone gives you a book, you should take very good care of it. So we keep the jacket on the book when we're not using it. But when we are telling the story, we can take this off if we want. So I'm going to put that down in front of me. And now I'm holding the book. The picture has changed, but it's the same story inside. So this is The Mitten, a Ukrainian folktale adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. Look at these beautiful illustrations, these beautiful drawings. So we can see on every page... We have an idea of where we were, and then over on this side, we have an idea of where we are going in our story. And then here in the middle, we've got all of these beautiful pictures and our words. So I'm going to start our story, our wintertime story about the mitten. Once there was a boy named Nikki who wanted new mittens made of wool as white as snow. So there is Nikki out there. Look at all this snow. And he's not wearing a big jacket. His hands are bare. He has a very beautiful toque on, though. But he wants new mittens. So we can see here. Oh, looks like somebody might be doing it. So let's continue on to the next page. And we see his grandmother. And there is Nikki. At first, his grandmother, Baba, that's what Nikki calls his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you will never find it. If you drop a white mitten in the white snow, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens, and finally, Baba would make them. So there we go. We see that Baba has all kinds of yarn. She's got green and pink. There's beige and blue red, yellow, brown, but what does Nikki want? White mittens. 
After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound. But then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went and whew, it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. Uh-oh. So we can see Baba is down here feeding the geese in their beautiful home with a thatched roof. A thatched roof means that their roof is covered in sticks and, and grain stalks. And then they have a, a fence here for the animals. And there's Nikki climbing a tree and he's got his mittens in his belt. But then, uh-oh. Now what is this here? What is this strange little creature here? I wonder. <gasps> it's a mole! A mole is that tiny little creature right there. You can see the mitten and the mole. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size. So he decided to stay. So there we go. Nikki was not using his mitten to keep warm. So the mole said, I'm going to use it to keep warm. And then we can look what's coming up next. What kind of animal is that? Do you know? Let's see. It is a snowshoe rabbit. You know, they call it a snowshoe rabbit because its feet are so big that they look like snowshoes. And snowshoes are special kinds of of shoes, of footwear. They look like a big tennis racket that you put under your foot and it helps you to walk on top of the snow without sinking in. So this is a snowshoe rabbit. It came, uh, it came along hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. In the winter, the snowshoe rabbits turn white like the snow. It was then that he saw the mitten and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. So there's the mole, and there's the rabbit, and they are both squeezing in tight to Baba's uh, knitted mitten. So Baba knitted it so well, and it's getting stuffed full of animals. Now what's this next one that's coming along? This is a special animal. It is called... A hedgehog. A hedgehog is covered like a porcupine in quills. A quill is like a very long hair that is very hard and pointy. It's almost like it's covered in, in, in spikes. Next, the hedgehog came snuffling along, snuffling. So the hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered in prickles, they made room. So there we see, there's the hedgehog, and he's crawling in, and look, pfft, he's squishing the rabbit and the mole. Those poor things, but they don't want to argue because he's got prickles and they don't want to get pricked. So what's coming up next? Oh, what a beautiful creature this is. This is a beautiful owl. An owl. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared in the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, all the moving and the noise, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. <clears throat> I don't think they're happy about it. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Ooh, they're spooked by this big spooky owl and his sharp, sharp claws. So they made room. Now what is this? The next one is a tree? Is a tree going to climb into the mitten, you think? I don't think so. I don't think a tree can climb into a mitten. Maybe, oh, is there something underneath it? Let's 
find out. <gasps> there is. Look at that. Up through the snow appeared a badger. A badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left. But when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. They said, okay, but look at this. Look at the badger and its mighty big claws. Because badgers, they dig under the ground and make tunnels. The mole, there's the mole, has diggers as well, but they're not as big as the badgers. Now let's see, how many animals are inside here now? We've got the hedgehog, the mole, the rabbit, the owl, and the badger. That's five animals. Can any more animals fit? It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel <gasps> drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look how big this, look how big this mitten is becoming. And look, you can even see the porcupine spikes sticking through. And there is a nose. Whose nose is that? Oh, let's see. Well, we know it's not the owl's nose. We know that. And the, the, the bunny's ears are over here. So that's not the bunny's nose. Let's see. Who else could it be? Oh, well, I see a bum. There's a bum right here. Whose bum is that? That's the badger's. So there's the badger's nose sticking out. And the, and the fox still wants to come inside. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Can you see who's coming up next? It's a great bear that lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. And he pushed in with his nose. The animals were packed in as tight as could be. But what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged in too many times its size. But Baba's good knitting held fast. My goodness, there is a mole, there is a hedgehog, there is a rabbit, a badger, a fox, and a bear inside. There's no more room. There can't be more room. No one's going to try to get in. <gasps> Along came a meadow mouse. A meadow mouse is big like this. It's so teeny tiny. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. Look at that. She can't even fit inside the mitten, but she wants to snuggle up with everyone. So she's right there on the tip of the great bear's nose. And... I think maybe a little, a little, a little mouse on your nose might be ah <laughs> The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Achoo! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. So here we've got the mole, we have the rabbit, the hedgehog, the badger, the owl, the fox, the mouse, and the bear, kabloo, all over the place. And the mitten flew up into the sky. On his way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten, silhouetted against the blue sky. Well, we can see it real clear right here. Nikki came running for his mitten, but look, boom, there goes the fox. 
Blam! There goes the mouse. Wapa! There's a there's a bunny bum in the air. We've got the bear running away, the badger, the hedgehog, the mole. They're all stuck in the snow. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. There's Baba watching him out in the yard. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound. And then she saw that he still had his new mittens. <laughs> So there he is. There's his first mitten and his second mitten. But here, well, what's this? There's Baba and Nikki inside. But look at this. Look, there's his mitten that he had on his hand. And there's the mitten that everybody crawled into. There were so many animals inside his mitten that he got stretched out. And it's way too big. It's way too big now. Oh, my goodness. So there is the story of the mitten by Jan Brett. Now, when I used to read this story in my classroom with my students, my favorite thing to do was we would put a big warm quilt on the ground. A quilt is a kind of blanket. We would put a big warm quilt on the ground. And as I read the story, I would pick one student who would get to be a different animal. So someone would play the fox. Someone would play the, the, the owl. Someone would play the big bear. And as every animal climbed inside the mitten, we would get them to climb under the blanket until there was no more room under the blanket. And then, uh, uh, chew! And we would throw the blanket in the air and everyone would tumble all over. And it was so much fun. Uh, and then we would take our blanket and we would all cuddle up inside of the blanket and stay warm even though it was very cold and wintry outside. We had a lovely book, a comfy blanket, and we had very good friends with us. So that's why I love this book, which we're going to look at the book jacket again. So this is Jan Brett's The Mitten. So I hope everybody enjoyed this story and I hope that you join me, Uma God, and Literacy Quebec for many more stories. We have even another one right now. So let's snuggle up and listen to another story. So this story that I'm going to be reading is a story. It's called a folk tale. That means that it's a story that people told to each other without a book for a very long time until someone wrote it down. This story is over a hundred years old old. That's a lot of years. And so it is a very beautiful story. And the reason that I love it is because it is written with lots of words that can help us to describe the winter time. Special words that describe the snow, the colors that we see, the ice and icicles. It is a beautiful story full of many wonderful words. So I wanted to share it with you. So this is the story of the snow children. And it is written and illustrated. Illustrated means that they, they drew all of the pictures. So this person wrote the words and drew the pictures. Their name is Sybil Von Olfers. This little girl here sitting in the window is named Poppy. Poppy looked out of her window she was all alone in the house, for her mother had just stepped out, but seemed to be gone an awfully long time. Outside was still, and the sky was gray. But what was that? Suddenly, Poppy saw lots of snowflakes dancing and jumping as they fell. Now, if you look in the picture here, what do we see? We can see Poppy right here in her window. But what's this? What's going on outside? Are these, are these snowflakes? I think Poppy is using her imagination. So in her head, she is imagining, pretending that the snowflakes that are falling from the sky are actually little children. Little tiny children dressed in white. They have a beautiful white coat, white boots, and a white hood. 
Come and play with us, Poppy. We'll take you to the Snow Queen. There were hundreds and hundreds of snow children, beautiful and dressed in white, swirling and twirling, calling out to her. Poppy dressed up warmly in her coat, hat, and thick gloves. She ran into the garden to watch the wild game. So Poppy, what color is she wearing? She's wearing red, just like a poppy flower. And I think that's very smart because if she walks out into the snow, no matter where she is, we can see her because she's wearing a beautiful red coat. Laughing and giggling, the snow children called out for Swirly Wind to come with her silvery sledge. Now, a sledge, that's a special kind of little sleigh, kind of like a toboggan almost, so they call it a sledge. And Swirly Wind, Swirly Wind is here, there the person is pulling the sledge. Poppy sat on the sledge, and away she was pulled, over hedges and woods, with the snow children dancing around. And look at these beautiful pictures. So here we have all of the snowflakes that are coming down, and we can see here these are flowers called snowdrops. And as they pull Poppy along in the sledge, there's Swirly Wind pulling the sledge all the way. <gasps> What's that in the distance? It looks like upside down icicles, but I think it might be a village, a snow village. Where are they taking Poppy? Let's find out. <gasps> they came to the castle of ice, all shining white. The turrets like sugar, the walls smooth as glass. So the turrets, those are those tall buildings that we see on a castle. The part that I said looked like an upside down icicle that points right up into the sky. That's a turret. And they said that they were like sugar. Sugar is white and it sparkles a little bit. The walls were smooth as glass. There, Poppy stood in awe before the Snow Queen's throne. The queen, with the royal princess on her lap, welcomed Poppy to the grand festival. So here we can see there's Poppy all dressed in red, and then she's there in front of the snow queen and the princess. There they are sitting together. What a beautiful throne for the snow queen and the princess. They have beautiful crowns. And look at all of these beautiful archways with dangling icicles and all of the snow children. And I even see some snowmen. I see some snowmen there in the hallway. For today was the princess's birthday. A huge feast was spread out for the guests. There was snowy white chocolate and sweet iced cold tea. Snowmen, who usually just stand still and very quiet, hurried about serving the delicious food. When they were done, they stood at attention around the white walls. So there we go. We see all of the snowmen that are, that are serving food and standing at attention. And there's Poppy next to, the, next to the princess. It's her birthday. And they're having such a wonderful feast. Oh, imagine the beautiful things that they are eating. And um, 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 crunchy snow, icicles, sweet treats. Then the princess took Poppy for a stroll around her garden. A thousand different kinds of wonderful flowers sparkled like crystal glass. Because when something is made out of ice, or if there's ice on top of it, the light shines on it and it sparkles. The ground was polished like a mirror, and the leaves, plants, and grass were all snowy white. 
Look at this beautiful garden. Usually, all of the plants in the winter time get covered in ice and snow, and a lot of them, they wilt, they wilt, they get droopy, or they might die for the winter, and then they come back in the spring, and they are bright green and beautiful colors. But look here in the magical land that they've gone to, they have plants that grow in the snow. So again, we see the snowdrops. We can see beautiful plants that are growing up, 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 all the way to the sky, and they sparkle like glass. Suddenly, a trumpet fanfare <laughs> announced the dance. A hundred lanterns had been lit in the great ice hall. The snow children's lively dancing led them all around the Snow Queen's throne, whirling faster and faster until Poppy felt as though her feet would drop off. <gasps> they're spinning and dancing and going around and around. Oh, they're having so much fun. Can you see all of the little snow children holding hands and doing a spiral dance that spins around the Snow Queen? And again, we can see all of the light shining. We can see how sparkling the ice is. Very beautiful. Poppy sank down in the snow. Her ears and eyes had had enough, and her body ached. Now, all she wanted was to go home. The princess cried, Oh, stay with me. We'll play exciting games, and, and I'll give you the biggest icicles and lots of snowballs. Oh, Poppy and the Snow Princess were having so much fun that the Snow Princess did not want the party to stop. She said, Poppy, stay with me, stay with me, please. Oh my goodness, have you ever had a birthday party and nobody wanted to leave? Everyone wanted to stay and keep eating cake and sweets and opening presents? Well, that's the Snow Princess. She doesn't want anyone to leave. She wants them to stay. But the Snow Queen said wisely, Quick, fetch the sleigh. Don't worry, Poppy. My snowman will drive you home. In no time at all, the sleigh stood by the gate with four strong snow bears harnessed in front. Poppy said a fond farewell to everyone. So let's see here. We have our snowman that is driving the sleigh. We see here we have Poppy who is very comfortable. And then we have, let's count them. One, two, three, and one is very hidden. Four snow bears. Did you know that what we call polar bears, these white bears like this, in German, they call them ice bear, which means bear of ice. So the snow is there, the icicles are there, all of the plants are snowy and icy, and even the bears are snowy and icy. <laughs> the sleigh stopped at last before Poppy's house. Her mother stood at the door and welcomed her. You're back at last! And Poppy told her mother about all of her adventures and the wonderful things that had happened. Perhaps one day you too can ride on a silver sledge to the Snow Kingdom. Oh, and there we see Poppy and her mother. Her mother came home and I'm sure she was very worried. Where was Poppy? Mom had stepped out to go do the groceries or to visit a friend. And when she came back, Poppy was missing. She had run off to the Snow Kingdom. But here they are coming back together, and her mother is so happy to see her. And Poppy told her all about the magical things she got to see in the Snow Kingdom. And that is the end of The Story of the Snow Children by Sybil von Olfers. So this is a beautiful story with so many wonderful words. We learned words like sledge which is a special kind of sleigh or toboggan. We learned the word turret. The turrets are the big, skinny, tall towers that, have, uh, that we have at a castle. 
We learned words about how to describe the snow, like sparkling like glass, or we can compare it to things like sugar, which is white and sparkly, or like a mirror, which is hard and shiny. So those are all special words that we learned here in our book. So when you go out walking and you see all of the snow and the ice, now you have special words that you can describe. And maybe you can even imagine when the snowflakes start to fall, you can look out your window and you can imagine the snow children and the snow kingdom with its beautiful castle. I wonder what kind of things you would eat if you were there at the feast. What kind of dancing would you do? And what color would your snowsuit be? Mm, I think my snowsuit would be purple. That's my favorite color. But maybe I'm going to imagine something different. We'll see. So everyone, that was our story for now. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. I hope that you enjoyed it and that it changes how you look when you look out into school. Thank you.